Greetings folks, today I'm going to be talking about a couple of little GPS sensors from Maytek, the GPS SAM M8Q and the GPS uh, M8Q5883, which is a SAM with the compass basically. These are tiny, tiny little GPS sensors. Compare it to, uh, there's the Batian BN220, it's even smaller than that and a lot smaller than the Batian uh, 880. So perfect for saving weight on tiny builds, sub 250 uh, gram builds like the Nano Goblin there, or the Drift or the Dart 250. I'll go through what we get in the, in the uh, packets and um, tell you a little bit about them too. Uh, now they are both compatible with GPS, Galileo and GLONASS and they're three different uh, nationality GPS systems or GNSS systems. GPS is the US, Galileo is uh, the EU and GLONASS is the Russian system of satellites. And they're M8Q rather than M8N and I think that just means that there is no uh, external flash memory so uh, it seems they can't be updated with the firmware uh, but otherwise they're perfectly functional GPS sensors. So let's have a look at the M8Q. Seven grams, U-Blox protocol, uh, UART connection, so it has an RX and a TX. Has a 3.3 volt voltage regulator, so it can accept four to six volts, which is perfect for our flight control boards. Horizontal position accuracy of 2.5 meters, velocity accuracy of 0 0.05 meters per second, cold start 26 seconds, aided cold start 2 seconds, hot start 1 second. And they do have little batteries on them to assist with the startup. Default board rate is 9600, but uh, can work on a range of 9600 up to 115200. Update rate 5 hertz with U blocks and 10 hertz with U block 7. So you can actually choose U block 7 in the INAV setup. And we get the connection cable there and some heat shrink as well. So there we go, that's the SAM M8Q and the M8Q5883 <coughs> includes the 5883 magnetic sensor or magnetometer or compass basically. So the 5883, it is actually. Same SAM sensor on there, and actually a smaller board, but it has more components on the back. Uh, it includes the QMC5883L magnetic sensor, and we get a nice sort of soft silicon wire cable, but we also get the um, DA and CL connections, the I squared C connection for the compass, and the same power ground and uh, RX and TX cables. Uh, we get a couple of LEDs on here. We get a, a red LED for power and a blue LED that flashes when we've acquired enough satellites for a 3D fix. Now, if you look, as usual, if you look on the Maytech website, you'll get very good information about how to set it up and everything. Um, shows you the board rate and uh, it says that if you're using the compass and you have the, the arrow facing towards the front of the craft you need to uh, select CW720 flip in the compass alignment I'll show you that in uh, the INAV setup in a little bit and it is recommending that you keep it 10 centimeters away from power lines ESCs motors and iron based material so here's the SAM unit by itself and we have 5 volts ground and RX and TX RX is yellow, TX is blue. We also have a pad for 3.3 volts there as well. And on the 5883, we have all of those previous ones, five volts, ground, RX and TX, and the DA and CL I squared C connections. Now, if we look at the flight control board, my GPS is on UART4, which is this one here, ground, five volts, TX, and RX. Now just one thing to notice on these F405 wings, we've got the ground to the left and 5 volts. 
But on the GPS, we've got the five volts to the left and ground next. You just have to be aware of which wire goes to which pin. And uh, these are the I squared C connections here, CL2 and DA2. I don't have any pins there at this point on this board because I didn't intend to use a compass with it, but I would have to go and solder on a couple of pins there if you want to connect up the um, 5883 unit. And of course, remember with the UART connection, the RX wire goes to the TX pin, TX wire goes to the RX pin. With the I squared C connection, the CL goes to the CL and the DA goes to the DA. So I'll show you how to set up the GPS and the compass in iNav. Uh, so we go to ports first off. Decide which UART you're going to put your GPS on and uh, this is on UART 1 here and the board rate and as we said before you can use any of these board rates um, I've always just used uh, 115200 and that's worked for me and in configuration we need to tell it which magnet magnetometer we're using and that would be the QMC5883 that one there and we need to select the CW270 degrees flip if the arrow is facing forward. If you want to flip it around the other way, if it's easier to mount with the arrow facing backwards, then you can use CW90 flip uh, or whatever orientation suits you really. So I'll wire these up. I might put this one on my Rover maybe because uh, that needs a compass. I, don't, I only have one quad really that I could use it on. So I'll put it on the Rover to make use of the compass uh, and I'll put this one on a sub 250 build. Maybe the little Nano Goblin. So I've mounted it up here on my iNav Rover. Uh, I'm just going to pop this outside to see how long it's going to take to acquire satellites. We can't get anything inside the shed here, so let's take it outside. So we've got four, five satellites now. That took about uh, 30, 40 seconds, six satellites now, but not a 3D fix. I have fired this up yesterday in the backyard, so it does have a little bit of information to start off with. That took uh, a few minutes. Dropped a satellite, there we go, we've got seven satellites now, so that's pretty usual for my backyard. We'll get a lot more when you go out in the field anyway. Nine satellites, we're right to go. So, satellites acquired. Let's go for a mission. Throttle active. Off she goes. Dog's over there, we should be right. Heading off on its little, on its little L shaped mission. Should turn left soon. There we go, turning left. Find the waypoint. Oop. Circling around the other way. Oh no, this is the right way actually. Coming back down the leg of the L, wandering around, hello, here we are, and coming home. There we go, good stuff. So that works beautifully. That's the little Matek SAM GPS sensor with compass.